none of it's really worth it. It really isn't. Just go on with your life and let people say what they're going to say. The, the unfortunate part, though, David, is that no matter what's put out there, right, wrong, or indifferent, especially when they're wrong, there's never a subtitle. You never see them correcting themselves. You never say well, correct. You never see that correction or whatever. What they say kind of sticks. You have to let it wear off. It's that you know. It's it 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 just like stays with you for a while, and you just have to grin and bear it as best you can. But you know, it's a shame that you know a lot of things are said that are out, put out there in the media, and people believe it, and it's not true, and it's happened. So many times. I mean, in my life and Lindsay's life, even with my other kids, with you know, it, it's been wrong. It's it with Michael and you know things were said about Michael and Allie, Cody and Dina too. But it's uh, it's just something you have to learn to live with. That's it. It's a shame. Has there been one thing that's been said about Lindsay where you're just like, you know, it's just so far off or it just angered you more than you know? I mean, there's a lot said throughout the years, but like, is there one thing that just let me say this. It's not what's what was said. It's what what's not said. Let me tell you what's not said. Lindsay has one of the biggest hearts of anyone I've ever met in my life. And that's my lips to God's ears. I've seen her do things for people and care about people in ways you wouldn't believe. I stood on, I stood with her in uh, Disneyland in Anaheim one time. And there were a lo long line of people waiting for an autograph. And there was a child in a uh, in a wheelchair, was a quadriplegic. And she turned to me and she looked at me. She said, Daddy, do you see the boy on the line? I said, yeah, honey. She said, do, do me a favor, have him brought up front. And they brought the kid up front. And the minute after that kid, she gave him a lot of attention, probably more attention than anyone else. And when the kid left, she had to take a break and she went back behind the curtain with me. And she buried her face in my chest and she cried. And she said, why does God let, allow that to happen? She, that's just only one of the many instances. They don't see what she did in Syria, what she, how she sacrificed herself in India when she worked on the human trafficking thing. She put herself in some really desperate situations, but they always looked at the bad things. They looked at the, that picture of Lindsay on the, uh, uh, in the New York Post where she was asleep in the car and they made it look like she passed out or overdosed or whatever. It was a long night. And unfortunately, that picture was taken by Samantha Ronson and sold to the press, and they created a false narrative about it. It was wrong. I mean, she, was she out late? Was she partying? Yeah, probably. But you don't do that to a person. And then they create this narrative about her that was absolutely not true. Is Samantha Ronson one of the people that, you know, when you refer to people that, like, surrounded Lindsay and, you know, you and, you know, that were out for their own selves? Well, look, Samantha... You know, she was a DJ and she had her own following. But let's face it, when she met Lindsay, she went from here to here. She went right to the top. So was there some kind of initiative in it for her? Did, was there something she wanted out of it? Probably. <clears throat> that wasn't Lindsay anyway. She wasn't, you know, she wasn't into that kind of a relationship, but she did. And I guess people experiment and so on and so forth. But look, <clears throat> she's married now having a baby. So obviously she's not... That was in the direction of her life she wanted to take, but you know, to each his own. And God bless Samantha. But um, it's just, uh, yeah, I, I felt that that was uh, that was a period, of, a darker period in her life when she was out there doing things. And you know, when you look at that period in her life, that's when you know her house was robbed for all the jewelries by the bling ring and and all the other garbage going on and the nightclub crap. And you know, when you surround yourself with the wrong people, bad things happen. You know, you can't, my grandfather always told me, you show me who you walk with and I'll tell you who you are. And you can't expect to, you know, live in the, in the light and the darkness. They, they don't co coexist. It, either it's one way or the other. And she, you know, but that's part of Hollywood. It's part of growing up and she got beyond it. And by the grace of God, I think that she's probably in a better place now than she ever was in her life. Is this true? I don't know where I read this or maybe Rachel told me this, but is this true that you are kind of the one that, you know, pushed her into acting or just kind of got her started in acting? Is that true? No, oh. no not at all. Well, no, and Rachel, I don't think Rachel said maybe, that. Maybe, maybe I read that somewhere. No, what she probably did say is I brought her to her original audition for The Parent Trap, and that's what launched her. Did I get her into acting? No, Dina wanted to bring her into the city. She was a little three-year-old redhead with a lot of freckles, and she was very commercial. So they, um, you know, she was very, she, everyone picked her up. 
Uh, she was doing TV commercials and print ads. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of everything. And, and then came the time, and then she got um, that soap opera, Another World. And she played, uh, or I think it was Ali Fowler was her character. And after the first season, she was nominated for an Emmy when she was only nine years old. But at that time, that's when she got the audition, that global audition for the parent trap. And Dina couldn't go because Cody was just born and he had an earache or something. And uh, so I took it to the audition and that was her break. But was I responsible? No. Did I do what a dad had to do and take her? Yeah. And that launched her career. And let's get this straight. Nobody, but nobody is responsible for their kid being a star, but that child themselves. Mommy or daddy or uncle or aunt or grandma and grandpa, they didn't create that star. The talent that that person, that kid has, is what created the star. Lindsay did it on her own. Not me, not Dina, not anybody. Lindsay is responsible for her own success and her own her talent. Why do you think so many parents then get that look? Listen, it came to you and Dina too, you know, like here's our cash cow and we're pushing our child into this. Like yeah. that narrative was out there. That disgusts me. It really does. I mean, look at, and I can prove this. Never did I take one red cent from my daughter or make any money off my daughter. That was one of the problems I had with Dina, my relationship with Dina. Dina was her manager. Dina got 20% of everything she made. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was kind of on the fence with that. I was like, should someone else get the money or should our own uh, own mother get the money? And I, you know, I still, you know, I see, you know, pros and cons with that. But do I, in, in, I mean, overall, do I think a parent should be involved in a kid's career or benefit from it? Absolutely not. That's what, they earned it. They made it. It's theirs. And I don't think anyone should be, you know, from earning off their children, which I never did. Um it's hurtful, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to discuss it here, but I know a lot about Lindsay's finances and where money went and so on and so forth. And it's not right. It was not right. Do you think, cause like you look at like, uh, you say like the parents shouldn't be involved. Like, would you do it over? You think like, and not have Dina as the manager, if you guys could go back as her well, manager. I would encourage Dina not to be the manager because it just created more problems for us. But the other problem was so many people, became involved. I mean, Dina had her friends there and, uh, you know, her friends were always going to premieres and this and that and getting drunk and family members. And ultimately that was the demise of our, uh, and the, you know, downfall of our marriage. It was all the other people getting involved and I didn't stand for it. And I didn't, I didn't want it. And it boiled down to a party at my, my house one day when Dina's brother was high at the house after showing up at a premiere high and they, people were complaining and I just had enough and I told him to leave and he came at me and we got in a fight and that was it. Yes. Do you think like, was it tied to like Lindsay's fame? Cause right. Like as someone gets more famous, there's listen, let's face it. Everybody wants a piece of the pie. You're right. There's all these hangers, hangers on everyone sees money.